Hi everyone, I'm Crystal Diff, Program Coordinator with History Services, and today's Fringe Paranormal topic is on the Hermitage Haunting. The Hermitage is one of the oldest buildings on Minnesota Key in Inglewood, Florida, and currently is used as an artist's retreat. It was built in 1907 by the Johansons. Carl Johansson lived there with his wife, Anna, and three of their 13 children, along with his aging mother, Matilda. Now, Grandma Johansson was very attentive to the children and did all of the cooking in the house. She was also very religious and read her Bible with her daughter-in-law at the start of every day. She was a Swedish immigrant, settling in Florida with her family in 1873, and she practiced some religious and medicinal customs from her homeland. One of these practices involved her sacred lead amulet. Burning lead or using lead amulets and charms has been part of folk medicine and religious practices since ancient times. It's believed that they provide protection against disease, ill health, and negative spirits. They have been found in sites all over the world from ancient Greece and Rome, Germany, England, Europe, and into Asia. And of course, those diverse traditions were carried into America along with its people. Some were created to be carried, worn, buried, or burned. The practice is still common today in certain cultures and medical journals still publish recent findings on the ramifications of toxic lead ingestion in ceremonial or folk remedies. Now, the following story comes from Isabel Johansson Hanlon, one of the Johansson children who lived in the home with her parents and grandmother at the Hermitage House on Inglewood Beach. She recounted the tale which was published in the Sarasota Herald Tribune in 1960. Grandma, who never spoke a word of English, was a wonderfully sensible and practical woman. Daily, she read her Swedish Bible aloud to mother. Neither would think of beginning a day without getting spiritual help for the problems they faced. The most important thing in those days was to keep people healthy rather than try to cure them when they got sick. There were no doctors at all, but grandma was always ready to keep us healthy. If we did get sick and the herbs did not help and prayers would appear not to be answered, then grandma used her sacred lead which she brought from Sweden. In times of great illness, she would burn this lead. Perhaps it was what folks call psychology nowadays, but when the smoke curled up around that lead, we just knew for a fact that the sick person would be healed. Grandma kept her sacred lead hidden high up in an old-fashioned clock that hung over the table in her room. None of us knew where it was except Mama. Now, stories of the Johansons are published in many local books, uh, such as Inglewood Lives, and also I have here uh, the history of early Inglewood, which is some of those newspaper articles from Josephine Cortez that have been published into one book. Unfortunately, Grandma Johansson fell ill and the family moved into Arcadia where there were more amenities and comfortable surroundings. They knew that she was close to death because she just refused to use her sacred lead, knowing that she had no more curable ailments. After her death, the family moved back into the hermitage, and that's when unexplained noises and happenings began in the home. Isabella recalls the noises that began in the home after they returned. At night, we would hear a window rise in Grandma's room, and all of a sudden it would fall with a loud clatter. Mama went into the room but found all the windows barred and closed tightly. Yet the sound of the window opening and shutting kept us up night after night. Then Mama said she believed there was something in that room that kept Grandma from resting in peace. After going over the room thoroughly, she remembered the sacred lead. She took it out of the clock and dug a deep hole in the sand behind the house. With a few prayers for the peace of Grandma's soul, Mama spoke to Grandma as though she could see her and said that if the sacred lead was what worried Grandma to please rest in peace because it was buried. 
According to the family, after the sacred lead was buried, the noises in the home stopped. The family eventually moved out of the home in 1916 and various owners took on the property. When the family would return to town, they would hear stories from people in town of the Hermitage ghost and how the same noises they heard after grandma's death continued to be heard in the home. Over time, there were more and more witnesses to the haunting. Some residents of the home would not renew their lease due to the strange noises and an old sturdy chair thought to be original to the home and to the Johansons would be toppled over in the middle of the night. It's said that one of the residents invited a psychic to spend the weekend in the Hermitage and to sleep in Grandma Johansson's room to see if they could find any evidence of Grandma Johansson there. The next morning they found their visitors sleeping on the couch because there were too many emanations in the bedroom keeping her awake. Some say that the slamming of the window and the toppling of the chair is Grandma Johansson's spirit still searching for that sacred lead. For more information on the Hermitage Haunting and the Johansson family, you can go to padlet.com forward slash history services forward slash fringe paranormal to join our discussion and see some of the primary sources that were used in this video. Thank you for tuning in today for our episode of Fringe Paranormal and the Burning of the Sacred Lead. I hope you enjoyed some of the stories about the historic Hermitage House and its possible haunting. You can tune in again next month where we have another episode of Fringe Paranormal 